Hey there, I'm Jesse. And I'm Ari. And together we are the Trekkers. And we hike, camp, and boldly go all over the United States in our road trek. And we've had a lot of fun, and we hope that you've been following us on some of our adventures. And if you haven't been, you should check that out. Uh, but today we're here to talk about uh, something a little bit different. We're gonna talk about camping etiquette. As we've been on social media more and done more of our YouTube channel and been out and about camping, We've had people reach out to us and say, hey, what are you seeing out there? Or with all the new campers and RVers now, because of the pandemic, we're starting to see an uptick in, in the use of campgrounds and campsites. People have said, you know, should somebody be talking about camping etiquette, um, campground etiquette? <laughs> and, and I say camping because it's whether you're in an established campground or whether or you're, you're out in the middle of the woods, which is what we like to do. There's things that you should think about. I don't think that people are necessarily being rude or obnoxious on purpose. I think they just don't realize sometimes that the actions you are doing while you're camping can affect your neighbors. And that's something we thought we would talk about. So we've got a few that we've dealt with over the years. And we also reached out to some fellow YouTubers to say, hey, what have you seen that, while you've been out there traveling? And they sent us some clips. So you're going to hear from them as well. Hi, I'm Dwayne Floro with The Best of Us, The Floros. We've been asked to share what can be frustrating for us at a campground. Hello, hi, this is uh, Kevin and Kim Outdoor Adventures. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some camping etiquette. You're settled in for a good night's sleep. The stars are shining. You're hearing the birds and the bugs out making the sounds of the night and you feel like tonight's the night I'm gonna finally get the rest that I've been waiting for. This is the reason I camp. And then all of a sudden you hear this. Don't you just love the sound of a generator to break the silence of the evening? Now this is our Honda 2000 generator so it is a little quiet some don't have the casing and they can be very noisy in the middle of the night this is very noisy so be sensitive to those that are around you as they can have a cutoff time i would say around 9 10 o'clock at night at the absolute latest and not before eight or nine o'clock the next morning if you really want to stay friends with those new friends you made at the campground where you're staying so, take it from me. Good thing to do. Is simply enjoy the sounds of the night of nature around you. Open your windows and let us all sleep. Thanks. Another thing we've noticed more recently is loud TVs and loud radios. I, this is one of those situations, I think, where people don't realize how much sound travels. Um, you know, whether you're in the woods or you're at a campsite or a campground, you're going to see that sound travels a lot. I think we're hearing it more now. So many more rigs now are coming with outdoor speakers mm -hmm. for music, outdoor televisions and outdoor speakers for the TV. So people are outside more, which is great. It's, you know, it's always been kind of funny to watch people pull into a campground and then put up their <laughs> antenna and stay inside. So it's nice to get them outside camping. But if you are outside using those outdoor speakers or even just a little portable Bluetooth, those are a big thing now. We have some and we use them. But you always have to think about it's not just contained within your campsite. There's not an <laughs> invisible force field around your campsite. It's going to travel through the air into other campsites and people are going to hear you and, and hear what you're listening to during the day and again at night. Uh, we had an incident earlier this summer where we were camping at a state park and the people next to us basically ran their TV all night long. I, I have a feeling it was sort of a white noise to them, um, but it was nice and we wanted our windows open and we, we try not to run the air conditioner when we don't have to because again, that's noisy too and, and, and for us and for others, but the people next to us basically blared their TV all night long and that really was not appreciative. <laughs> and that wasn't even an outdoor TV, that was, no, was inside. Inside. We were inside, but everybody's windows were open. It was somewhat of a cool night, so nobody really needed the air on. But that was just something to think about, too. I mentioned outdoor stuff. When you're inside, if your windows are open, that noise is going to carry. So, again, think about what it is that you're doing that's going to carry outside your campsite and what's going to affect your neighbors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, or I... I guess we might come over and watch TV with you if it's, right. a, if it's a good show. I mean, show. I've, been, I've been known to peek in on, you know, football games that people are watching on Saturday afternoons at campgrounds. So, you know, sometimes it's nice to have that outdoor TV and more power to them. I think that's great. We're not saying you shouldn't have them, uh, but just being mindful of it, especially after hours or in the evening. I mean, 
campgrounds, you've got kids going to bed early, you know, and some people have to get up early for varying work situations. So yes, we know you want to be out there. We want to be out there having a good time around the fire as well, but we just do try to be mindful and, and ask others that they be as well. Let's talk about families and kids. We like kids. We have two of our own. Um, but we just have noticed a couple things when we've been out camping lately that we feel that we should address. And camping is a great family experience. I would always encourage families to get out and, and camp with your kids. And when you're out, maybe boondocking in the woods or even if you're just in a campground, let them get out and explore. Get them get out and have some fun. Find other kids. Kids are a great icebreaker too because oh my gosh, it yeah. doesn't matter where you're from or what they're like. If they look like them, don't look like them, sound like them, it doesn't matter. Kids are kids and they're going to just meet up and start playing almost instantly. And I think that's a great thing that adults could learn from kids <laughs> a, a little bit more. Um, but I think sometimes, especially in a campground, it seems like people tend to just let their kids go without any direction. And that's something that maybe we should think about. No, we are big proponents of letting your kids go. I mean, we did that with our own when they were growing up and we used to boondock a lot and, you know, basically send them out into the woods and go play. Um, and I think they should, they should be free to do that in campgrounds as well. However, we've had a couple experiences lately um, that kind of made us think that there should be a little bit more control. Uh, when we were on a camping trip recently, there was a lovely apple tree right in between a couple of our sites. And this group of kids, none of them which belonged to the campsites that were right around it, decided to start climbing that tree, hitting the tree, shaking the apples down, throwing the apples, and they were hitting other people's units and rigs and tents and chairs and just causing an awful lot of racket. I think a part of it is just reminding your kids, I mean, they wouldn't necessarily go to the neighbor's yard and climb their tree and shake the apples loose or whatever or anywhere in the neighborhood that the kids just need to remember that a campground is your new neighborhood while you're traveling and have respect for your neighbors and for their property and just kind of think about what they're doing. So maybe it's something where, you know, remind kids that just as you would behave at home, that's how you should be behaving when you're out at a campground. Another camping etiquette that we like to follow, don't go cutting through other people's campsites to get through. Make sure that you walk and go around and follow the pathway. Another tip would be uh, camping etiquette. Uh, make sure when you're going into campsite at night that you have your headlights, your high beams down or, or turn your headlights off so to avoid shining into other campsites while they're sleeping. So when you're out camping and you have lights on, as you can see, um, be respectful to your neighbors when you're going to bed. Turn them off. However, you could probably leave this one on because it doesn't illuminate so much. If you followed our adventures at all, you know that we love to head off into the middle of the woods in the middle of nowhere whenever possible and boondock. And a big part of that is because it often is very dark. Mm. We have too much light pollution at home in our sticks and bricks to really get a good night sky. And we love looking at the stars and you sometimes will try your nighttime photography. So that's great. But we have found a problem when we are camping near others. <laughs> and that is LED lights on everything, on awnings, on the front, underneath, on the steps, on the car, on the bikes, on literally everything. There's a bright, fancy LED light and they do serve their purpose. It means you don't have to have a big outside light on or flashlights and you know, you can kind of see under your awning if you're hanging out. But the biggest thing I notice is everybody then goes to bed and leaves all those lights on. And there's absolutely no reason for that. And for those of us, you know, if you're even walking around a campground or you're walking out in the woods, all you see are these bright lights. So not only do they interfere with your night vision because your eyes can't adjust, but, but it's also ruining the photography because uh, you're not able to get out from under those, you know, especially the awning lights are the big ones. Um, so we're just asking people to be a little bit more considerate and that when you're not at your trailer or you're not outside your trailer, to turn those off. Um, and that's sort of a plea to the manufacturers as well, that to, to make sure that they have an off option. Um, and, and do you really need these big LED Vs on the front of a fifth wheel? Because I'm really not sure what the purpose is of that. Uh, but essentially, uh, you know, many of us like to be outside, even around the campfire, looking up at the stars to watch the space station go over, the satellites and, and the moon. Uh, and, and all these lights are just sort of interfering with that. And it's taking away from the joy of going out in the middle of nowhere. And maybe think about if you're out and you need the light, turn it on for that, that few minutes that you're out there doing something. But then when you don't need it, you're just sitting down, flip them off if you can and, and keep it darker for everybody. So 
That's just something to think about again is not only is the light in your campsite, but you may not realize it is going into other campsites because those LED strips are very <laughs> bright now. So there are some ideas of things to think about when you're out camping, whether you're at a campground or out boondocking in the woods about how your actions and what you're doing might impact your neighbors. When we thought about doing this video, we didn't want it to be a complaint fast, and we hope it didn't turn out that way. It's just a friendly reminder for all of us that the actions that we take really do impact others. So whether that's cutting through people's campsites or it's leaving the lights on or it's blaring loud music, just be mindful about the things that you're doing and so it can be a pleasant camping experience for everybody. I wanna give a big shout out to Kevin and Kim and Dwayne for sending us their clips to help give us more ideas and things to talk about. I think it was really great. So thanks very much for doing that for us. We hope you found these tips helpful. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so that you can find out about future tips and our future travel adventures. In the meantime, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there. All right. <laughs> but then you go to bed and they're still on and the camera is falling off the tree, and I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> okay, let's try that again then. <laughs>